it at least four times, and I went through all 1,854 footnotes. I started to read your book, Mr. Dershowitz. I then came to chapter one, footnotes 10, footnote 11, footnote 12, footnote 13, footnote 14, footnote 15, footnote 16. All of the quotes are from Joan Peters. They are so from Joan Peters that you have a long quote here from Mark Twain on pages 23 to 24. Mm -hmm. I turn to Joan Peters, page 159 to 60, the identical quote from Twain with, with the ellipses is the, in the, the is ellipses. The Twain quote, is the Twain quote wrong? With the ellipses, the Twain let me finish, wrong? sir. No, 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 but the, the key with is, the ellipses in the same places. The identical quote from Twain with the ellipses in the same places. It's been widely I then, quoted, as yeah, you know. Really, now, Mr. Mr. Dershowitz, no, no, I then, I, what's your point? Is it, then is it a correct quote? quote? Let is, me finish, no, Mr. No, no, Dershowitz. Make, I want to ask we you a question. Have a, is it a right, direct, is it an I'm, accurate okay, quote of uh, Twain? Uh, Did Twain say uh, what Professor I Dershowitz, quote him as the way we, Dershowitz, the way we can have, have finish. The way we can have a civilized discussion here is that each person will get a chance to make their point and won't be cut off. So You have a nearly a full-page quote from one William Young, Mm -hmm. A British Council from May 1839. Is it an accurate on quote? Page eight, I'm going to finish, sir. Mm -hmm. On page 18 of your book, I turn to Joan Peters, page 184, the identical quote with the ellipses. I'm holding it up for the camera. Perhaps they can see. This is the length of the quote. The is ellipses, it an accurate quote? The ellipses in the identical place. Last point. I'm not going to go through chapter two where there are 29 plagiarisms from Joan Peters. Well, wait, wait, no, no, let's be very clear. It is not plagiarism yeah. to quote Mark Twain yeah, ex correctly. Yeah, except, That's not except plagiarism. Except if you cite Mark Twain and not Joan Peters. I'm a professor, sir. I know what plagiarism is. And plagiarism uh, sir, is? Well, let's, uh, hear, the, let's hear your definition listen, of plagiarism. No, we're not going to get involved no, no, we're not gonna get, So you're using a word I'm you're not going to tell us what I'm you mean I'm going to give it. the documentation, and you know what? We'll let everybody else decide for themselves because okay. the documentation. One last example, and I want to make it very clear. In Joan Peters' book from Time Immemorial, she coins a phrase. The phrase is "turn speak," and she no, says, "No, she borrows it from. No, she borrows sir, it from from um, who sir, is it? Sir, oh, I'm sorry. No, she attributes it and borrows sir, it from somebody else. I'm it's not sorry. her own phrase. She coins the phrase. You see, you don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. and that's pretty terrible. Phrase. She coined the phrase turn speak, and she says she's using it as a play off of George Orwell, mm -hmm. which, as all listeners know, used the phrase news speak. Right. And she coined her own phrase." turn speak. You go to Mr. Dershowitz's book, he got so confused in his massive borrowings from Joan Peters that on two occasions, I'll cite them for those who have a copy of the book, on page 57 and on page 153, he uses the phrase, quote, George Orwell's turn speak. Mm -hmm. Turn speak is not Orwell, Mr. Dershowitz, you're the Felix Frankfurter Chair at Harvard. Yes. You must know that Orwell would never use such a clunky phrase as turn speak. I like it. I think it's a well, very elegant I, well, phrase. Well, maybe you like yeah, it. And I do. Evidently, Joan Peters liked it. Mm -hmm. But George Orwell never heard of it, to the best of my knowledge. We have to break okay. for let, stations. Let just one sec. Just one sec. We have to wait. Just, book, just right. one sec. Fine. We mm -hmm. have to break for stations to identify themselves. Mm -hmm. They have 60 seconds. And when uh, we come back, uh, Professor Dershowitz can respond. Thank We're you. talking to Professor Alan Dershowitz. He's author of a new book. It's called the Case for Israel, in debate with Norman Finkelstein among his books, The Holocaust Industry and Image and Reality of the Israel-Palestine Conflict. You're listening to Democracy Now! Stay with us. Look at the charts. Mm-hmm. 
music from the late Frank Lowe here on Democracy Now!, The War and Peace Report. As we continue our debate on Alan Dershowitz's new book, it's called The Case for Israel. Alan Dershowitz is professor of law at Harvard Law School. In discussion with Norman Finkelstein, who teaches at DePaul University in Chicago, his books, Image and Reality of the Israel-Palestine Conflict and the Holocaust Industry. Professor Dershowitz, your response. Well, this very serious charge of plagiarism. Well, it's a, it's a, a frivolous charge, of course. What happened was this. Of course I read the Peters book. Anybody writing a book on the Middle East would. I also read a book called The Myths and Facts, which is a book put out uh, originally by AIPAC and then published separately and independently, and probably 30 or 40 other books which use the same quotes. They're very extensively used quotes by Mark Twain, because Mark Twain traveled to Palestine. Mark Twain's a very prominent American writer, and what he saw in Palestine is very relevant to the debate. He saw barren lands. He didn't see a Palestinian uh, community. He saw uh, empty roads, and he writes extremely uh, vividly. And um, uh, one a scholar is entitled to read a book, as I did of Peter's book, and to find quotes in the book uh, and check them against the original quotes and find them to be accurate and then do what I did. Uh, I don't know whether or not Mr. Finkelstein read footnote uh, 31 that appears on page 246, which says, the research of French cartographer Vital uh, Kuntz are no, relied no on Kuntz, for the conclusions. Queen a. Oh, I may have mispronounced mm -hmm. it. I'm sorry. No, you misspelled C it. And then I say, C. Joan Peters from Time Immemorial, Chicago, etc. Mm -hmm. And then I say, Peters' conclusions and mm -hmm. data have been challenged. And then I quote from Saeed and Hutchins, I do not in any way rely on them in this book. In other words, what I did, and it's very common for scholars to do that, is um, I read her books, I read Mr. Finkelstein's criticism of them, and I came away with enough doubt about the conclusions that although I don't regard the Peters book in any way as a fraud, I think it was a well-intentioned effort to recreate and uh, the, the very difficult to recreate events that existed in 1890 and 1900. Um, I did find her quotes, which have been, as I said, used extensively by uh, facts and myths and other publications, to be quite compelling. And uh, she led me, I mean, I don't purport, this, this book and none of my writing mm -hmm. purport, I'm, I don't purport to be an independent historian who goes back to the Middle East and reads original documents. Mm -hmm. I'm making a case. I'm doing what a lawyer uh, would do and what lawyers do is they find sources, they check the sources. I had a research staff that obviously checked the sources. I haven't heard a word from uh, Mr. Uh, Finkelstein suggesting that the quote from Mark Twain is not an accurate quote. Mm -hmm. Now, if Peters had taken, had made up a quote from Mark Twain, and it hadn't existed, Mark Twain had never written it, and then somebody borrowed the quote without going to check back on whether Mark Twain had said that, obviously that would be a a serious charge. Uh, I've done nothing like that. The vast majority of my book deals with current situations. In fact, I start my book by saying there has to be a statute of limitations on grievances. Uh, I don't try to base the case for Israel on the fact that Jews lived in Palestine uh, before the birth of Jesus or the fact that Jews were ex expelled from what is now Israel in 72 AD. And I argue that Palestinians can't really make the case against a two-state solution based on historic claims that go back 100 years. But in the first couple of chapters, which are quite brief, I recount, never purporting to be creative or original in the recounting, I recount what has been accepted as the traditional history, and that traditional history includes the fact that the land, particularly what is now West, what would be Western Palestine, what was the part of Palestine allocated to Israel in the 1947 um, a, a, a division, was land that before the Jews got there in the first Aliyah, but 1880-something and the second Aliyah in the beginning of the 20th century.